Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 69. Thanks for tuning into the podcast on one of the many podcasting streaming apps or through our website, rockisgeorge.com, on our YouTube page, or at knac.com. My guest for this episode is Ryan Shuck. He's the current vocalist for the early 2000s new metal act, Edema. He is also the frontman for Julian K, and you may remember him as a member of the band Orgy back in the late 90s. In addition to being a longtime musician, Ryan is also an entrepreneur. He had his own clothing line, he was a model, and he has several successful restaurants in California. Recently, Adema just finished a little summer tour through the United States. They have a new single out called Violent Principles that they released back in June. They got a lot going on for them. So let's hear from Ryan Shuck, vocalist for Adema. If I knew absolutely nothing about Adema, how would you describe the band's music to me? If Corn and Orgy, if the little brothers of Corn and Orgy got together and created an original band that really reflected like the the sound and the energy of Bakersfield, California. Uh, I think that that would be Edema. And, the, and, and of course, the beginning of the new metal, you know, movement, they really captured, you know, and defined, helped define what is now one of the most influential uh, movements in music that's ever existed. It was started by Korn. Uh, and later on, you know, Corn signed Orgy, my original band, and we went and helped flesh out the sound as well. And then Edema came along just a little bit after us, you know, heavily influenced by us, but also bringing their own very original take on what it is that it meant to be, you know, a heavy band with melody and actual songs and interesting new uses of technology and programming to make it a, you know, true new metal to new modern heavy rock. Uh, Edema has new music out right now. You have a new single called Violent Principles. It came out in June. Uh, if you want to go into a little about what the song is about. We wrote about 10 songs and, um, you know, just kind of finding our way, just trying to figure out what we sound like with me being the singer, you know, whether or not I should be the singer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I have some other successful projects that I'm in, Julian K, you know, Orgy, Dead by Sunrise, so I don't have to do this. It's not like, a, you know, I got to make some extra money. Um, it's got to be right. Violent Principles was the result of some of these experiments um, where we, we threw away a lot of songs, but I kept telling the band that the band needs to really think about where we're all from. We're all from Bakersfield, California. We need to capture the feeling that, that got people to like the band in the first place. We need to capture the thing that made people connect with the band in the first place. You can't forget the fans that liked the band from the beginning. So I was pushing this idea of, you know, feel free to modernize stuff and all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to go back to my roots and I'm gonna write lyrics and, and I'm gonna capture the feeling that we had on the streets of Bakersfield, um, all creating this music together. And, um, you know, I said this for a few years in the beginning as we were fleshing out what the band was gonna be. Violent Principles is sort of a result of us really focusing on the roots of what made the band popular in the beginning. And lyrically, it's capturing a lot of the feelings that we had, you know, being from the streets of Bakersfield, wanting to show everyone what we could do, not wanting to take anyone's shit, um, being kind of these fucked up kids that, that actually had this big voice that was able to connect with all these people. And Violent Principles is about that. There's kind of a chip on my shoulder in that song. There's kind of a, there's kind of an attitude that I'm capturing, you know, for the band. There's an attitude that I'm capturing for the fans and the people that like this music and that grew up with this music. And that's, that's sort of, without getting super specific as to the, you know, specific meanings of each sentence or, or the song, which I think kind of takes away sometimes of people's ownership of the song. It really is about capturing the feeling of, of what the people that love this kind of music, what they're thinking and what they're feeling. And interestingly enough, um, the song is really new and there were markets that we just played, New York being one, um, that were singing the lyrics to that song, the verse, uh, louder than I was singing it. So I think it, had that resonating feeling I was going for. Um, people are are gravitating toward the actual lyrics, and I think that's that's like 
that's the ultimate thing. That is, that's a super cool thing that a band can do. And you guys had released a single prior last year uh, called Ready to Die, and that was sort of your introduction as the band singer. Yeah, and that was another, um, you know, result of a lot of experiments. Um, we, have a, we have a small collection of songs that are done, that are ready to be released. And we're carefully releasing them. We're not just going to, you know, blah, here's a bunch of songs. We're trying to tour, release a single, and kind of see how the crowd, how people like the stuff. Make sure that we're on the right track. The idea is not to just try to write songs that people approve of. The idea is to make sure we're doing what Edema needs to be doing, right? The idea is to honor Edema, the band, and what people love, what I love in the band. And so Ready to Die, I felt, was a really, really good... Um, I, I don't know if it's kind of like a palate cleanser, because I think a lot of people that know who I am... Um, and the, like some of these diehard Edema fans, I'm sure there was fear that I maybe wasn't going to bring the hard shit, that I wasn't going to bring some of the gnarly screams and all this kind of stuff. And my answer to that, to that is, guys, you know, Chester Bennington taught me how to sing. You know, here you go. <laughs> so, you know, so I, I, we wanted to drop this heavy track to show everyone that, hey, we're not, we're not forgetting who we are. In fact, it's going to be, it's going to be so much more than what you think um, that, you know, here you go. And indeed it worked. And uh, I mean, the numbers alone show from our streaming and all that kind of stuff. The song is streaming at a level that the song's platinum selling hits are streaming at. So no matter what radio you know, it gives us attention or what shows we get to play. It doesn't matter because the fans are actually gravitating toward what we're doing. And that's what gives us the strength and also gives us the income and the money to continue to do what we do. You know, we're also cranking out full music videos for each one of these things. So, which is unheard of for an independent band that's, you know, hasn't put out music in 10, 11, 12 years to put out MTV level music videos, you know, and put it, get it direct to the fans and let, you know, market it ourselves, do all our own stuff. Um, all of this is designed to sort of spell out where the band is going. So you have like Ready to Die, which is the first single that was kind of like a punch in the face. You know, hey, you know, I, I'm not, this may not be what you think it would be, getting the guy from Orgy and Julian Kay involved in Edema. And then we have um, Violent Principles, which is hitting more of the um, giving in, um, kind of like the, the melodic big singles that they had. We're kind of exploring that side as well. And we have songs that are on both sides <clears throat> of the spectrum. And so we wanted to kind of slowly spell it out for people that, look, this is something that you can trust. This is the way the music's going to be. This is the level of execution we're, we're, we're executing at. And, uh, you know, buckle your, buckle your fucking seatbelt. And you're putting out this music on your own record label framework? Yes, yes, reluctantly. Um, you know, we would have uh, we would have loved to have gotten a major label involved, but um, you know, anyone that we've gotten involved with, um, you know, started having big talks with, um, either didn't didn't come through in a way that I was happy with, and we have some other offers that are really there, and there's money and everything there, but it doesn't come with some of the other stuff that I really want. Um, you know, I have some money. I have the ability to do a bunch of stuff. I don't necessarily need a check. I need things that I can't do. So I need guarantees that we're going to be able to have this level of marketing. I need guarantees that we're going to have this sort of like support to get on, you know, these big festivals and the things that you need to break the band. And a lot of these deals, unfortunately, are like, hey, here's, here's a small amount of money to make your album. And we own it forever. You know, the masters are owned by us. You're welcome. And my answer to that is like, cool. The money you want to give us, I can write that check myself right now. Like, I'm not, I'm not that guy. I don't need 40 grand. I don't give a fuck. I'll write, I have 40 grand. Um, I need you to do things that a label does. <laughs> so, you know, um, and that has not, I haven't been able to get that you know, get that, that feeling that I'm going to get that love and support for the band. You know, I could be crazy and maybe, maybe we could sign one of these deals and they would do all that. But unless you're going to put some sort of language in there that says, look, these are the things we're going to try to get done for you. It doesn't even necessarily have to be guaranteed, but you know, they don't really want to 
you know, they want you to perform, but they don't want to say, hey, we're going to perform at this level too. You guys bring it here and we're going to bring it here. And that's the way a lot of deals are now. You know, they just want to kind of, you know, the catalog's a big deal. So people want to buy the catalog. You know, they want to get in there and own the fact that Edema streams at the level of like hundreds of thousands of streams per song per month. And that does create income. If you got a lot of money and you have the, the system in place, you can just go in and buy it for 20, 30, 40, 50 grand and then make that for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years of, of you know, of income. And it's a great, it's a great business. So um, what we decided to do was just go ahead and we'll fund it ourselves and um, we'll put it out on my label and thank God it worked. Um, you know, we've got the streaming level that a major would have gotten and we did it for pennies on the dollar. And then what we're gonna end up having to do is stay open. I'm open to someone coming in and saving me. I'm open to it. I have this tattoo called deliverance on my chest. <laughs> it's about the concept of wanting to be delivered by someone else. I think it's fucking bullshit. And I got it tattooed on me. It's not actually the movie. Da -da -ding 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 -ding. Um, but uh, I have all these like cathartic things tattooed on me. And, uh, you know, we, uh, I'm open to, to someone coming in and getting involved. But until that happens, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, do our own crowdfunding campaign. And we're going to raise our own money to do our own album so that I don't have to write a giant check. You know, we'll get it done with our fans. We'll get it done with the people that actually love the band. And and that's the way it should be. The fans should be invested in this with us. I agree. That's, yeah. There's no better way to do it in, in these modern times. Yeah. Um, how did you get the gig fronting Edema? Um, I was trying to put the band back together. Uh, when they were playing with Marky again for a short period, I went and saw them play here in Orange County um, at Garden Amphitheater. And, um, you know, they didn't have a, a sound guy. They didn't have like a merchandise, you know, line. They didn't have, you know, crew. It was the band and they were kind of putting it back together. And they played this, you know, nice big outdoor venue. And, um, and there was a lot of issues with the way the system was and the business was. But I was able to walk around to the different sides of the stage and sit in the crowd. And they were all playing awesome. They all sounded great individually. It just wasn't coming out the speakers that way as perfectly as I would like. And so I started, and I've been friends with these guys for 20 fucking eight years. You know what I mean? Dave Daru and I were in our first band together with Jonathan Davis from Korn. Um, so, you know, that's where Blind was written and other things like that. So the history is extremely deep. And so I've been fans of these guys. I've been a fan of these guys. And I've been supporting of these guys. And likewise, they have been of me as well. And so, um, you know, I talked to Amir afterwards and I was like, man, I'd really like to work with these guys. I want to tour with them. Like, I, I want to help them do what we're doing in Julian K. You know, in Julian K, we're running a really successful indie music business. You know, it's direct to the fans. We can tour the world on our own. We don't need, you know, we have an agent and a, an attorney and that's it. You know, other than that, I run the whole fucking enchilada. You know, we have a record label, a production company, whole thing. We do our own videos, everything. And it's fucking awesome. It's hard, but it's awesome. And I was like, look, I think I can help you guys tour. You guys can tour the way we tour. We stay at really nice places. We have a good system. You guys can really make money if you follow my system. And we got really deep into talking. And I'm like, dude, we'll take you out with Julian K. We'll do an awesome run. We'll share expenses. I'll help you guys with everything. That's just the way that I think. And um, I got on the phone with Marky a lot, tried to, you know, get him to understand how much fucking money you can make if you just want to go out and do this and I'll help you. And um, I mean, Edema sold more albums than Julian K. They were on a major label with radio hits. Julian K is an independent band comprised of the guys from Orgy. So we've got cool stuff going on, but it's been through hard work, sweat and tears and consistency. And, and of course our former name, um, Edema, has the name Edema. Lots of people know who that is. And so I'm telling him this and we're talking for, you know, many phone calls. And uh, finally, one day he's just like, yeah, you know, I don't like that music. You know, I don't, I don't want to do this. And I want to work with you on this other stuff. And I want to do this other band. I want you to sing on it. And I'm just like, whoa, that's not what, that makes no sense to me. Okay. Well, I wish you would have told me that a fucking month ago. And um, I basically go, okay, well, you know, have a great life. And Bye bye. And I called the band and I go, guys, I'm so sorry. I, I, I've not had many people say no to me because 
when I'm selling something, I'm not selling garbage. I'm selling something that's awesome, you know, and that will make you money and we're all going to have a good time. That's my, that's my pitch because it's the truth. I've never had anyone say no. So I'm like, this guy's crazy. I'm sorry, guys. I see what you mean. This is insanity. I'm so sorry. I love you. Your band's over. Bye-bye. Indeed, the band was over. Um, I got a call about eight months later from Chris Coles, and apparently him and Tim were talking. And Tim was like, man, the only way I would do this again is if a guy like Ryan was singing. You know, like a real known like guy with real chops that really has put out lots of albums that everyone knows, and it makes tons of sense for Edema stylistically. And they got a major tour offer because they're Edema. Edema gets major tour offers. I mean, they're getting like Rob Zombie offers. They're getting, you know, and they can't do it. And Chris called me and he's like, hey man, we got another offer of Power Man 5000, Head PE and Edema, and we really want to do it. And I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. And he's like, hey, w would you sing? And I just was kind of silent, you know, and I, I didn't know what to think about that. I go, you know, let me think about it. I've, I've never thought about something like that. Maybe I can come out and help you guys out. Maybe it'll be fun. And I can help teach you guys how to do what I do. And I talked to Amir, and Amir was like, well, you just need to go see if you sound right on the music. You know, go, go rehearse with them secretly. Don't tell anyone. and Just see if it sounds good. So, good idea. So I went and sang with them in Bakersfield, and it sounded really interesting. You know, a couple people at the rehearsal were like, oh, this is almost like Nine Inch Nails meets Edema. Like, this has got a really interesting, you know, flavor to it. And so I came back and was like, you know, I think I'm going to do it. And so Amir's like, awesome, man. Let's, let's, I'll go out with you on the tour and let's keep an eye on these guys and see what's up. So we came out and we kind of secretly strategized, like, if we were going to do new music with these guys, how could we produce it and what would it sound like? How do I sound on the music? You know, and Amir's paying attention to it every day. And we kind of put on our producer hats. And um, the tour went really well. I had fans coming up to me crying, telling me, thanking me for bringing the band back. And when I saw that kind of shit and how well I was accepted into the fold, um, I just kind of felt like, man, this is actually kind of real. This feels like a real band. And lo and behold, here I am now, three tours, 100 shows later, and you know, two new singles and an album in the works. You just finished a tour with Head P.E., Crazy Town, and Fly. I would imagine there was some friendly competition since they were all peers around the same time your bands all started up. Weirdly enough, everyone's just really supportive of one another. You know, um, I came up with Head P.E. and Crazy Town. Like, I, I literally grew up in the music scene here in Southern California with those guys. Um, and there's lots of there's lots of collaboration and shows together and coming up together before we were even called the names that we are now. And uh, so there's just a whole lot of like really strong brotherhood and support. And I think the coolest thing for me was that a lot of those guys, you know, they finally listened to like the new Edema songs that we did. And they're coming up every day, singing the songs to me and like going like, dude, you know, wow. You know, we, we remember Edema before we hadn't listened to it with you in it. And they're like, holy shit. You know, it's they, they were literally just like, so stoked on it that's a lot of that's the support that i could really i i can really latch on to that it really means a lot and and same from us you know like i i you know went up and did a guest spot with crazy town um chris played drums because his his band got in a in an accident on the first on the on the first night band got into a you know totaled their vehicle and everything so he was just showing up with a backing track ready to play and we kind of stepped in and did the brotherhood thing that we learned from corn and uh, just kind of collaborated on stage and made it happen. So there was there was good um, brotherly like vibes out there. It was really nice. You have another tour coming up. Uh, we have um, we have some grumblings of something happening early next year in Europe. I can't say a whole lot about it, but uh, there's something pretty solid forming. Um, we have uh, a couple of big one-off shows and festivals. Um, we have one later this month in Quincy, Illinois. We have another one after this in Apple Valley, California, um, and uh, and we're and we're remaining. I have some Julian K stuff as, as well, um, probably in October. Um, you know, a lot of it's just kind of coming together and you know seeing where it ends up falling. It's been a couple of years since new Julian K material. You guys working on anything for the future? Yeah, yeah. Well, always always working on stuff. We've been releasing singles lately. We have a project called Al Alternative Universe. And what we're doing is we, we take songs that, that we have 
already released from Harmonic Disruptor, and we basically collaborate, use the, use the pieces of that song, we collaborate with another known artist, and we pretend for that one song, video, and everything that we're one band. So not a remix, not a, it's, it's a literally top to bottom marketing, everything as if we're in the same band. So we have, we just did um, the Annex, which did incredibly well, did incredible video and everything. Um, we did uh, Aesthetic Perfection, which did great. We have another one coming out with the Lord, Lord, Lord of the Lost, which is a big European band. And we have another one coming out with the Birthday Massacre. So we've got a lot of really, really cool stuff going. We've got um, original singles as well. We just put out Desperation Day. Um, we have another one coming out soon. Um, we have some touring coming up. We have two albums in the work. We have like an, an EP called Dark Mode um, that's gonna be pretty heavy dark wave stuff. And then we have Trauma Echoes, which is the next major album. And um, Harmonic Disruptor came out right as COVID hit. So despite that, it's actually been an extremely strong release for us. Um, we're surprised. We've still been touring that. And that's still a pretty big big part of what we're, what we're doing. I know you've been a bit removed from Orgy for a few years, but uh, 2023 is the 25th anniversary of Candy Ass, one of my yeah. favorite albums of that yeah. era. Uh, what do you remember about uh, getting into recording that album and kind of the success that followed? Um, I remember that at that time, um, the world of modern heavy music was heavily, heavily influenced by corn and the stuff that we did in the beginnings, like in Bakersfield and all this kind of stuff. And I remember that we went into the Orgy album, you know, with corn signing us and everything. Um, with their encouragement, uh, you know, we wanted to do something different. We wanted it to be heavy and in some ways we didn't know what we wanted to do. We just wanted to do something really different and we were finding our way, um, you know, during that recording process and with discovering Blue Monday and Stitches and the songs that became hits on that album, um, kind of where we were going to go as a band and, um, you know, there was there was a, a, a pretty lengthy period of time where people heard what we were doing and they did not get it. Corn supported us. Corn had our backs and that's what made that happen. And that's why Corn is fucking awesome. Those guys are fantastic. But the way the guitar sounded and the way the vocals were and everything were not accepted. You know, people did not, you know, there were people in power and our, and a lot of our friends that were like, you guys are fucking crazy. This stuff sounds stupid. You know, this is totally horrible. And, and why are you guys wearing eyeliner and you're painting your nails and you know, everyone's wearing baggy clothes and dreadlocks. So why aren't you guys wearing baggy clothes with dreadlocks? That's going to, you know, sell more. And we just came out looking like fucking androids, you know, um, just really on the edge. And, uh, and, and it really took, it took a couple minutes to work until MTV, you know, we went to MTV and we did our whole thing there. We did our first big press day and MTV pulled us and our management aside they're like these guys are solid fucking gold man this is like we're gonna make we're gonna make this video a buzz clip and this band is like going somewhere we're like whoa and uh you know blue monday blew the living fuck up i think that sometimes when you're that weird sometimes you need a familiar thing to kind of help break the ice you know i.e marilyn manson limp biscuit um orgy and so many other bands that had their first kind of major um their first major single be like a be a cover, you know, that was really unique. And ours was extremely unique in that we wrote a chorus that didn't exist before. You know, we actually wrote a whole new part of the song. So it really became an orgy song, um, kind of influenced by New Order. And um, and yeah, I mean, that's that's just it all harkens back to like being up in that cabin up in Lake Tahoe and uh, not knowing what the fuck we wanted to do, but that we wanted to be different. And funny enough. I talk with Edema about this all the time. They recorded their first album influenced by us going up to Lake Tahoe. They went to Lake to Shaver Lake and uh, and uh, you know did their did their album and everything up there in the spirit of orgy. And so they they had watched what their big brothers did and they went and they did the same thing and you get these two epic, you know, albums that are just so so fucking cool. Uh, is there any chance for reconciliation with orgy at this point or is it um it, it you know we tried for a really long time to to do orgy you know we, we really really tried um and jay just wasn't having it 
and then out of nowhere he just announced publicly that he was going to go to orgy and that we weren't part of it so we were just kind of like okay that's weird um you know we're all we're all you know equal partners in this thing so that's a you know okay um and he went and did it and the problem with reconciling is there has to be something to reconcile right now the band isn't selling tickets and the name has been the name needs to be worth something you know because they went out and they went out without the real band and fans kind of you can fool them once but you can't fool them over and over and over and um fans aren't buying it and that's the problem is you can't then just go okay hey now we're the real thing it's the whole band and then go out and do it because promoters and the people that pay the money for these shows they're going to look at that history now that's been created what was a sell out every show history has turned to a not selling tickets history and that's the problem and that's where it's kind of been really shot in the foot really badly i think the only way to do it would be to if we were going to do it is you would have to kind of secretly record a whole new album that is really orgy. Same way that I told the Dima to work. You got to go back to the beginning and you've got to do that. And I don't think that Jay is going to want to do that. You know, I think that you really have to be confident in who, what it is you created in the beginning to keep doing this and have a long longevity. You can't throw people for such a curveball and you know get rid of all the members and all this kind of stuff it, it just doesn't work <laughs> you know so um and unfortunately that's what we're seeing i mean you know i mean just from a business sense um you know obviously orgy is the thing that i'd make the absolute most money doing you know selling out shows every single night is a really rad thing <laughs> um you know um but that's not existing now so that's been taken away from us unfortunately um, but I'm glad that, you know, we've stuck to it and created other ways to do this, you know, because as you can see behind me, I mean, I'm, I'm a guy that loves to create music and I love the business. I love managing it all. I love, um, I love, you know, exciting the fans. I love, I love this stuff. Is there a timeline on a full album from Edema? Or are you just going to continue your plan with the singles and then decide once you reach a certain amount of singles? We're going to, uh, well, we're going to begin the out. This year is going to be like, like this year is going to be the, we're really going to write an album, but we're going to have to simultaneously launch an Indiegogo campaign and fund the album so that I know where we're going to do go, how we're going to actually finish it, record it. And in the meantime, we'll release singles up to, you know, it's not going to be 12 singles. It's going to be, we'll release somewhere between four and six you know and then you'll get the the other chunk of the album with an album but that's going to allow us to have enough latitude and leeway to you know get this done because again we're not we're not walking out and writing a you know forty thousand dollar check to go in and just go away for two or three months and write an album those days unfortunately are over over so if we do an indiegogo campaign and it goes the way julian k's goes then yeah that changes things a bit you know we've raised We've raised, you know, $160,000, you know, doing Indiegogo. I mean, we're one of the biggest crowdfunding bands in the world. If Edema fans are that involved, then yeah, it changes the deal. You know, then if, you know, if we raise 40 grand, 50,000, 50 grand, then yeah, I, I'd say everyone, um, you know, we're going to have to go rent a place and just stay together for a month and write, you know, but until then, you know, we've got to continue to work on all of our other shit and keep the ball rolling, you know? That's all the questions I have for you today, Ryan. I appreciate you coming okay. on the podcast. It's been fun talking to you. You're such a positive guy. You, you kind of make me want to start a band. <laughs> no, I have that effect. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you the best of luck with Zima, and I'll uh, see you out there soon. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Once again, I want to thank Ryan Shuck for coming on the Rock is George podcast. Head over to your favorite music streaming app. Check out the new singles by Edema. See what you think. If you like what you hear, when it's available, buy a physical copy of the upcoming studio album. Make sure you're supporting the artist. For all things Edema, head over to edemamusic.com. While you're at it, check out Ryan's other band, Julian K, at juliank.com. I also want to thank Shauna O'Donnell of O'Donnell Media Group for making this interview possible. You've been great. I've been George Dion. I'll see you again soon.